Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Starrett. I am the science teacher at Austin Ridge, and I wanted to read you a book called Libby Loves Science. It is the perfect book for me because I love science. Hopefully by the end of the book, you will love science as much as Libby does. And if you've heard it before, doesn't mean you can't listen to it again because it's so great. And if not, just sit back and relax and enjoy our story. Libby Loves Science. Libby loved science. She loved mixing, pouring, measuring, and stirring. Science is a lot like baking. If you bake at home with your family members, very similar to science because it has to be exact or precise. And um, I bake with my daughter all the time. She loves doing exactly what Libby loves to do. She even has a stool like Libby. Whipping up ingredients and making delicious things to eat was one of Libby's favorite ways to experiment. Rainbow pancakes taste way better than plain ones, she told her family, and sometimes it was true. So she just used some food coloring to make her pancakes like a rainbow. Pretty neat, never really thought of that, but that's a fun thing to do. At school, Libby's science teacher, Mr. Darwin, taught the class about chemistry. Libby loves chemistry because it's all about mixing and pouring and measuring and stirring. Not all chemical reactions occur at the same rate, said Mr. Darwin. Uh-oh, said Libby. Looks like, our looks like our reacted too much. Remember, your measurements need to be precise, said Mr. Darwin. But it's okay, mistakes can lead to discoveries. And sometimes making mistakes was way more fun than cleaning up. So you can see in this picture, Libby and her partner, her experiment didn't go that well. And um, you can see that it's spilling over. One of my favorite things about science, which is different than other subjects like math or reading, is it is okay to make mistakes in science because that's what some of the greatest scientists discover new things with. And lots of times things don't happen the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. It can take hundreds of times before your experiment gets it right or before you get your experiment right. So that is okay. On the other side of this book or this page, it says foaming fountain experiments. So there are some experiments in this book as well. I'm not gonna read through all of that, but if you wanna take out this book, this is a great book to do some fun experiments at home with some things that you probably have in your kitchen. And that's what this experiment is. One day, Mr. Darwin made an important announcement. We are in charge of the science booth at our school's fall festival, he said. Everyone was excited. The fall festival was fun and Libby liked the science booth best. Yay, we will have the best booth ever, said Libby. This year, the booth that gets the most visitors and collects the most tickets wins an ice cream party, said Mr. Darwin. We need volunteers to run our booth. Libby, Finn, and Rosa jumped up from their desks and said, we'll do it, said Libby. Sounds like fun. Libby, Finn, and Rosa met at Libby's house after school. We absolutely need to win, said Libby. Just imagine the ice cream party. I love ice cream, said Rosa. Competing with the bouncy house won't be easy, said Finn. I think we can do really fun experiments that everyone will want to try, Libby said. Cool. We can decorate the booth too, said Rosa. I've got tons of supplies, said Finn. We can make our booth really stand out. Libby, Finn, and Rosa searched for fun experiments. They made a list of possibilities and they voted their three favorites. Finn decided to make giant bubbles. Rosa wanted to mix fluffy slime. And Libby chose to launch a rocket. I can't wait for the festival, she said. All seem like great experiments. Lots of fun for me, I think. The number one thing that people come and ask me in the science lab is, can we make slime or can we erupt a volcano? 
So those seem like very popular things to have at their booth. Finally, the day came and the festival arrived. Libby, Finn, and Rosa got there early to help Mr. Darwin set up the science booth. Finn hauled in hula hoops, dish soap, corn syrup, and a kiddie pool. Rosa carried a basket of shaving cream, glue, saline solution, and glitter. Libby brought baking soda, vinegar, and empty water bottles. They decorated the booth with posters, signs, and cool science stuff. I would definitely stop by that booth. When the festival opened, the cotton candy booth was swamped right away, and the dunk tank was a huge hit. But the face painting team was the one to beat. The festival was crowded with friends and family and teachers having fun. No one's coming to our booth, said Finn. Maybe everyone thinks science is boring, said Rosa. Science is never boring, Libby said. We just need to show them that chemistry is fun. So just because they had the materials out, people wanted to see what they were going to do. So what do you think? They're probably going to do their experiments. That would draw in the crowd so people can watch what they're doing. I know, said Finn. Let's blow some giant bubbles. The bigger the better, said Rosa. Finn filled the kiddie pool with water while Rosa mixed the soap. The secret ingredient is corn syrup. Libby said, yep, it makes bubbles a bajillion times stronger, said Finn. And over on this page is the recipe or experiment, I should say, to make your giant bubble. If you want to go home and do that. Now let's make some slime, said Rosa to the small crowd that had gathered to make bubbles. Extra glitter equals extra sparkle, asked Finn, or excuse me, added Finn. It's important to add the saline just a little bit at a time, said Libby. That's what makes it extra squishy, said Rosa. And then right here is that fluffy slime um, experiment if you want to do that at home. Definitely check this book out at the library. It's a great book. Now for the grand finale, said Rosa. Our rocket will be out of this world, said Finn. We'll win for sure. If we use extra baking soda, the rocket might go even higher, said Libby. Science is a blast, said Rosa. And here is the bottle rocket experiment. When Libby added the baking soda, the liquid started to bubble. And when the bottle filled up, the rocket zoomed high in the air. Whoosh! But unfortunately, it sprayed liquid everywhere. It sprayed it all over the kids waiting in line. It sprayed way more than Libby predicted. Everyone got soaking wet and ran away. The face painting booth still had a huge line, said Finn. I don't think we'll have enough tickets to win. I'm sorry, said Libby. I thought the rocket would be awesome. At least we got a big reaction, said Rosa. Indeed, they did. Oops. The next day, the principal, Neil, announced the winner of the Fall Festival booth contest. The ice cream party goes to the drum roll, please. The art club, she said, and their face painting booth won by a landslide. Everybody cheered. Even Libby, who felt like her science, but even though Libby felt she let her science class down. Mr. Darwin called Libby, Finn, and Rosa to the desk. You three did a great job on the booth, he said. But we didn't win the ice cream party, mumbled Libby. That doesn't mean that we can't celebrate how hard you tried, Mr. Darwin said. Any ideas? Maybe we can have our own party, Rosa said. What kind of party, Finn asked. An ice cream party, and we can make our own ice cream, Libby jumped up, and I know exactly what we need. I've made my own ice cream before, and it's pretty easy with simple ingredients. It's lots of fun, but it can get tiring because it's a lot of mixing and shaking. But a great experiment or science project and baking activity. 
So here is the recipe or experiment if you would like to try to make ice cream at home. Libby wrote a list of ingredients on the board. Rosa borrowed sugar from the teacher's lounge. Finn ran to the cafeteria for ice, vanilla, and milk. Mr. Darwin grabbed rock salt and freezer bags from his supply cabinet. Libby walked the class through the steps in the recipe. She even added lots of colors because rainbow ice cream usually tastes better than plain ice cream. This is delicious, said Finn. Sometimes the best reactions aren't always the first reaction, Mr. Darwin said. Because ice cream is cool, said Rosa. Yeah, said Libby, and science is cool too. And on the very last page, it talks about Charles Darwin and how he's a famous scientist, even though um, in the book, that's the teacher's name, talks about what chemistry is and um, experiments, measurements, observation, and predictions are just some of the other vocabulary words that you heard me say throughout the book. So hopefully you enjoyed this and you got inspired just like Libby to do some fun science either at home or at school or with your friends. Boys and girls, I hope you had a great time. It was great seeing you and I'll see you soon. Bye.